A warm welcome to everybody out there to our next webinar today about what are the traits of successful traders. That is an interesting question, hopefully for all of you. And um, yeah, warm welcome in the name of JFD as well. And my name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for those webinars that point in time uh, and those kind of different topics. Although the today's topic is a little bit different than other one before because it's a little bit more how to say it it's not directly ideally related to trading strategies but you will realize we mentioned strategies as well and even to we go for some special edges for trading um in the second half of this uh, webinar so both aspects uh, general traits of successful traders as well as some more technical details behind um, i think both will and are important uh, will be important for all of us and uh, hopefully you find that interesting as well it's always a pleasure for me to have so many people here um within those webinars thanks already for the um, comment uh, that my my first attempt to upload the slides for today's webinar have been the german one from yesterday <laughs> but um, now i have uploaded the english as well so you it's, it will be easy for you to realize uh, which is which uh, because already the title um, is telling you definitely the language and um, yeah there are two letters ge and en for german and english uh, as well thanks for uh, that remark because um, i i have not deleted the, uh, the german one um, maybe there's somebody more interested in the german uh, slides um, but um, Anyhow, both are available now. And of course, the webinar is uh, recorded. That means uh, from tomorrow onwards, tomorrow morning, um, you will find that uh, those that recording of uh, this webinar on the JVFD YouTube channel. And that is exactly the keywords you might press in Google, and then you're directly linked um, to um, the youtube channel of jfd by the way today is the 17th of may 2018 it's um yeah already nearly half a year is over from 2018 time is uh, running fast extremely fast i think and time of the day is 7 p.m at least uh, for uh, the german time anyhow i know that you are not always in the same time zone um, but uh, for me it's uh, 7 p.m a little bit more about the topic because the traits of successful traders is something what i do today is really to compare a little bit i call it the newbies to the professionals and i decided to just call the other side so to say just newbies and you may think later hmm, a few things oh i know them all and um please tell me new things but uh, wait a second um even today even for me um from time to time i have to um to say that yeah sometimes i still make the same mistakes than years before and to i have not totally learned all the lessons so um, let's go through the lessons and uh, let's always ask ourselves, are we 100% sure that we are doing everything all the time right? And I'm not talking about uh, that we will have trades which lose money. No, definitely we will, uh, at every and any time we will tr have trades which um, lose money. But in average, we want to gain, we want to profit and um yeah there are a lot of elements uh which yeah are quite important to come to exactly that state you know as always i have to show once uh, that slide here um the so-called risk disclaimer because i talk a little bit today even about trading strategies you may use those kind of informations but finally as always um you use those informations for your own and that means you are 100% responsible for all your trading activities. Um, you can't blame me or JFD. I think 
self-explaining as always and uh, I hope you understand that I have to show that and I have to mention uh, that statement uh, every week so to say or every second week I do webinars here. Okay, what are the topics in more detail? At first I want to start with some psychological aspects about trading and they are extremely important because if you trade you will realize losses, you might get in trouble. Um, let's assume, let me look to the list of names here. It seems that um, all are male. So maybe you ask us, uh, your, your wife is asking you, hey, how was the day? And you say, mm, not that good. So um, you know that there are a lot of psychological aspects about trading, but I want to categorize them a little bit and to help you to find the right aspects um, that may help you to deal with those uh, questions a little bit better. Not the question about your wife, but <clears throat> the question about trading at all and um, those psychological aspects. Then we want to compare a little bit more in detail professional traders as traders versus a newbie and I don't have a better word therefore I decided to take that one. Um, yeah and then we go a little bit more into the trading details and one aspect of trading is of course maybe uh, the most important one for lots of people and by the way, not for me, uh, is looking about charts. And therefore, I want to show you a little bit about what a chart is really telling you. And there's another quite interesting question related to charts that is about candlesticks at all. And what I call here intrinsic timescales or intrinsic times. They are important when it comes to um, candlesticks charts, especially when we go for um, D1 examples, for, exa uh, for example. That sounds crazy. Um, but anyhow, we have intrinsic times and if we know those, then we can um, gain some profit of those as well. Then we go further for the trades of successful traders with fundamental edges. And when I say fundamental, I do not mean here fundamental analysis of any, any stock company or uh, any market um, or region. No, I talk about fundamental probability advantages. And you might say, hey, do we have those? Yes, we have. And to use those mm, is extremely helpful, of course. As always, edges are the one which drive successful traders. And you know that we have had um, yeah, uh, quite a lot of webinars about specific edges like, like breakout trades or reversal trades, uh, pair trades, power candles, you name it. But we can look to those edges a little bit more in general and try to to profit from those considerations as well as a general bias for successful traders. And last but not least, I have summarized a few lines, um, just I call it a few wisdoms um, that you have a couple of nice statements, maybe you uh, you only will laugh about those, but um, maybe it's uh, just uh, funny for everybody. So let's see. Good. If we start about psychological aspects about trading, there's nearly, there's already one chart enough to tell you more or less everything. And you see, I used extremely big letters here, um, and I call it emotionless discipline. Yeah, that's quite important and, and both aspects, emotionless because we don't have to think about it and we are not talking about our emotions when it comes to trading, whether we feel good or bad. No, a trade is a trade and it's nothing else and we need to be extremely disciplined to, 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 yeah, to to go on with our emotions and to go on with our trading. And only if we have a strict plan of everything what we are doing, then we can 
even better deal with the psychological aspects of trading. But let's go a little bit more in detail. You know, just uh, the two words are not enough to for that topic. Um, I want to point out here um, a so-called model I learned, I think, 20 years ago uh, from previous jobs I have um, done. And it's more a scheme of the of people in general, of human in general. And it's talking about humans in three categories, illustrated by those three colors, blue, red, and green. And it will help us to understand who we are and to help, uh, it will help us to understand what should we improve and what is extremely important for traders and there are other jobs with um, other aspects which are um, more prominent or might help you more but when it comes to trading there are specific aspects of those three categories which might help you just spend the next five minutes with that model and think about your, your own, about yourself, and try to understand who you are with respect to, let's say, those three colors, so those three categories. Nobody is just one color, of course. We are always a mixture, a little bit of green, a little bit red, but maybe 70% is green of, of your own and 20 red and 10 blue, whatever. There are uh, questionnaires um, which might help you to, to understand who you are, but you, you will have an immediately feeling about the, those questions. Let me start. So the blue one, the blue one uh, is, a, is a accountant type. Uh, that is a typical um, occupation that is an accountant. It stands for that blue. And those are extremely rational. They are well organized. They like numbers. Everything repeats. The day starts at some specific time, not later, not earlier. They go to bed always at the same time, and so on and so on. So that is the blue one. To one extent, contrary to that, is the red one. Let's call him the determiner, the leader, the ego type. Those are people, maybe if you go to a pub and uh, there are 10 people around one table, the speaker who is leading that group or who is leading the conversation. Or um, if you go walking around with um, 10 friends and yeah, who is telling we should go there. But sometimes they, yeah, they do it in a way that they do not really listen to anybody else because they want to determine what happens. And you realize already, hmm, it might be critical when it comes to, to trading because we do not determine the price. At least um, I don't have the money for that. But anyhow, so that is the red guy. And the next opposite are the green ones. And the green here stands for yeah, the feeling human, the one who understands others, who's taking care about uh, the emotions of other people, those um, who always ask you, hey, how do you feel? Oh, pretty fine, that's good, um, thank you, and so on. They are, to some extent, a troubleshooter. Um, they, they help you. you. You might call them at 2 uh, a.m. at night and ask, Boah, can you help me? They will say, yes, I do. I can. They are more the family type uh, guys. And mm, they look that, that everything is smooth and works. But now the question, who you are? And what is important for trading? Of course, it's a blue line here, yeah, the blue element, which is quite relevant for trading. There we have that emotionless. We have those numbers. We react or we act on special circumstances. We do what we have planned. 
but who is 100% blue here? So I know from those questionnaires behind that I'm personally a little bit more on the red side here within that picture. And unfortunately, most of those um, yeah, trading gurus who will tell a lot about trading, they behave red as well. And um, I have to apologize that maybe I'm part of that group as well. But now comes the important part. The important part is that we can train ourselves. That means when it comes to the psychological aspects about training, it means that we have to develop our blue side. And we have to control red and green elements because we cannot, we cannot say your US dollar goes north. It's not up to us to say that kind of statement. And whether we feel good with a rising euro us dollar or not which might be part of that green side nobody cares not the market nobody so to to control those emotions and control that kind of behavior the mark market is against me give me my computer i throw it to the next wall you may do it um, if you have enough money so no, no problem. The more um, you, know, since you react like that, you might even go for the next trade. I, I double my lot size. Uh, the next trade, uh, that must be the better one. So that would be elements of red. And those ones we have to control. We need that blue thinking, strict, controlled, organized, and that is the one we need for our trading activities. The pure view on price, on charts, on movements, emotionless. And then we can do our job quite well. We can recognize if something goes wrong. And the next four lines here, I think everybody of us knows. I think there's no trader who has not suffered from one of those four lines uh, in the past. What are we doing sometimes? Hopefully not that often. Often and senseless view to my account. Oh, I go for my, my cell phone. I have an MT4 on cell phone as well. Let me look oh, how the account is doing, how the trades are running. What does it mean? What does it help? Nothing whether the price goes up or down, nobody cares. And of course, my account might go up or down, but just by looking to my smartphone or <clears throat> to my computer doesn't help at all. So we do it without sense, honestly. And therefore, I'm that strict um, in, in telling you uh, that it doesn't help. Yesterday in the German webinar, somebody mentioned, hmm, no, I have to look because if my trade is already in, um, in, in, in the profit region, um, and I might um, take my stop loss level and, and put it to break even. I can tell you what has been my answer. That can be done by the computer and you even don't need an expert advisor or something like that. You simply need a trailing stop uh, that could do the same job um, without my help and then the, the stop loss uh, is automatically uh, put to break even at a certain profit level so it doesn't help and the computer can do that job even better so it doesn't help or other question if you go to bed and ask yourself hey what about my trades tomorrow morning in case you have overnight trades. I cannot look to that and maybe you get in trouble because I will, mm, what is about next morning? And uh, the first thing you do after wake up is look to your account. Then you see something goes wrong. Or if you realize you do some mistakes and you say, with the next trade, I will do it better. My answer to that is no, then do it in the right and now. Immediately, if you realize you have done a mistake with a trade, for whatever reason, 
I'm not talking about the, 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 the trade is going to the minus, but you 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 realize oh wrong lot size, um, wrong direction, just a mistake or wrong analysis because you later realize your analysis has been wrong. Then there's one thing you can do immediately: close the trade wherever the trade is in profit or loss just close that trade if you realize it has been a mistake you don't have to wait to the next trade do it right now and immediately or you might think oh one more trade the next trade will recover my complete account then you definitely know that something goes wrong you know that from time to time I talk about um, statistical aspects of, of, of trading. And what I realized during my career here is trading is a cent business. It's not a big money, big trade business. It's hundreds of cents who accum which accumulate to your profit. And even if you are trading in a 100,000 account, then the, the, the trade itself, the loser and winners might be in the region of 10 euro or 20 or 50 euro. Definitely, they will not be in the region of 1,000, at least not in average. So it's always that average and that average for not that huge accounts is always a small number. And only the sum of those small numbers make your account looking good. It will not be exactly the next trade. If it would be, then you are trading definitely with much too high lot sizes. So one next trade can't recover your account. If it would do, you are doing something fundamentally wrong with your trades. So. All those aspects are important and are a little bit more of psychological um, nature. Or... But what are the differences between professional traders and let's just compare the professional with a newbie. I have no idea how many newbies we have really within those webinars. I assume not that many, but <clears throat> let's do it that strict and that black and white because then it's um, a little bit more meaningful um, if you do the comparison like that. So a professional trader, when he trades, all his trades have a stop loss, definitely. If you don't have a stop loss, you cannot uh, calculate the risk of the trade. And even if you have a stop loss and you have calculated everything, you still know that we have gap risk overnight, over weekend, whatever might, uh, additionally might happen, slippage, you know it. But definitely every trade has a stop loss. Otherwise, we have unlimited risk. The only exception might be if you trade the ducks and you go for a long trade, and you trade one lot ducks, then you um, and you allow the ducks going to zero, which is not um, um, yeah, not in favor, or it's not very probable that it will do that. Okay, then your final risk is thirteen thousand euros. If you are willing to to risk that amount of money, then you don't need a stop loss for a one lot tax trade. Maybe that is an exception for having not a stop loss here, but there is a natural stop loss in this case, and that's a zero. Um, I don't want to have that situation that the tax um, level is at zero. But anyhow, so a professional trader has always a stop loss. A newbie is um, quite often doing a trade and then later placing the stop loss, maybe. It's definitely wrong because you need your stop loss level in order to calculate your lot size. Otherwise, you 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 are doing a blind uh, um, trade. You you don't know what you are doing, or at least you are don't you don't know what the risk of your trade is. Therefore, that's a must. Professional traders have different strategies, and within one certain strategy, they use a certain risk for any trade because it's calculated before. They know what they are doing, so they have 
a certain amount of money or percentage of uh, your account, and that is the risk for the next trade of this strategy. Quite strict. Newbies, they adjust their risk, if they know their risk, randomly, and they do it from time to time. Or, I think it doesn't look that good. Mm, let me reduce my risk. Or, then I know that trade that's a winner. I double my risk uh, because I have that a good feeling about that net, next trade. So they adjust randomly their risk and that's wrong. Professional traders, they have absolutely fixed rules for any trade. There's no trade without a rule because nothing comes all of a sudden that you are looking at the chart and say, hmm, I think euro yes, still goes north. No, that's not the logic behind any trade. There must be a rule. And there must be a thinking, a strategy. And if you apply those rules, then you are doing everything always the same. And that's exactly what a professional trader is doing. Even in case a newbie has strategies, they tend to do what I call strategy hopping. That means they start with a certain strategy, then they realize, oh, I have lost maybe 100 euro or whatever account they have. Let me look for the next strategy. Let me look for the next webinar and the next trading guru, and I follow him. And then I trade this one. Yeah. And then there's the next drawdown phase of the next strategy and they hop to the next strategy and so on and so forth. That's what I call strategy hopping. It's um, enormous what people are doing um, with that respect. And then always looking for the internet, hey, um, the next YouTube video for the, uh, some somebody who's telling, I have the best strategy at all. No, don't do it. A professional trader uses edges, probability advantages, and those are the key element because only if you know them, if you know from what you are doing that it generates a probability advantage, a, a profit advantage in average for that kind of approach, then you can do those trades. On the other hand, the newbies, they tend to use, for, 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 um, for me, they, they tend to use too much what I call chart technique. I don't know exactly whether that is the right translation. That means we draw some, some fancy lines within the chart and a channel here and a triangle there and a flag there and resistant lines, um, support lines, whatever, you name it. And then we think, I have so many lines within my chart, so the price should stick to those lines. No, the price will do what he wants to do. And that, that price might be mirrored or <coughs> rejected by a certain line, maybe, but in most cases not. It's a little bit too easy just with a few lines to say, I can predict the future. If it would be that easy, then trading would be really nice, but it's a hard job. And um, it's not really, if you're doing this, this in that way, then you don't have a real edge because even in the literature, you don't find any hint that this will generate an edge. It looks nice. The story behind that resistant line might be nice, but there's no proof, no statistical analysis that it will generate an edge. It's looking promising, but does it work? At least one of what I have learned, the answer is no. The professional trader is extremely patient. He reacts more like, like a cat, um, like a lion, looking for the next opportunity. And if I have to look 24 hours, I wait. The newbie has a tendency for overtrading and saying, 
hey, the last two hours I have not entered any trade. That can't be. I have to trade. Um, if I don't trade, I cannot earn money. Yeah, but turn that sentence to the other side. If I do not trade, I cannot lose money. So, and sometimes it's quite important to be um, on the part not trading. Then you can't lose, of course, if you uh, wait the next uh, uh, 365 days and you don't have a trade within the next year. But this this tendency to to think I have to enter the next trade is totally wrong. Professional traders, they look for moderate returns. And on the other side, newbies, they try to double their accounts within a month or a week or maybe in three months. But think about that. If it would be possible constantly to double your account in one month, in three months, and even in one year, what a nice business would that be? Um, that would be really the holy grail. And there might be some other people looking to you and saying, oh, here's my money. Please double it as, a, uh, as well. It's completely impossible to have in a long run those doubling of your account in a certain, in that short time frame. It's completely impossible. If you just think about those numbers, you will realize it by your own. I know all those comparisons here are really quite strict and it's really meant for clarity. Um, I know that most of you are not really <laughs> those 100% newbies as described by me. But look on the other side, whether you are already on that professional level that you say, can say, hey, I'm 100% on the right and on the left hand side of my slide. And, and even I have to admit, I'm not to 100% on that page. So I have to learn and I will do. Of course, there's one other aspect and I don't want to forget that one. Trading generates fun as well. So it's nice to look for those charts. It's nice to open the next trade. And as long as you don't have to care about that money you might lose with those activities, then it's just something like fun. If you go to the next cinema, you have to pay for the next two hours movie as well. Okay, understood, but that's not the one we want to achieve because we want to achieve profits by trading. But how? Oh, no, one question before. Um, what is it, the chart really telling me? Because I mentioned it already in, in my last slide. And let's be more rational here about charts and especially candlestick charts, uh, which is good. I use candlestick charts as well. And every time I, I open here my, my MT4 account, uh, you see a candlestick chart uh, on my screen as well. But now let's look a little bit more mathematical about candlestick charts. And what we have to realize is that a certain candlestick, a D1 candle or an H1 candle, a one or even a one minute, an M1 candle, what does it mean? Such a candlestick is nothing else than the compression. And with compression, my, I mean, you, you boil down a complete time series of that one hour or that one day to four numbers. And the four numbers are open, high, low, and close. And that's all, nothing else. So finally, you have a candlestick with those four, and uh, that candle is described by those four numbers, but you only know exactly those four numbers and nothing else. You know the open, you know the close, you know that there has been a high at some point, uh, at some level, and there has been a low at some level. Now to say, okay, I can realize out of those four numbers a big story like, oh, doji candles, they are candles of uncertainty. Why? The only definition is for a doji that the open is more or less on the same level like the close or other way around. The close is on the same level like open and there has been an excurs to the north and one to the south and they are a little bit symmetrical. 
it doesn't tell you anything because you don't have any further knowledge about the price versus time change during that one hour, that one day, or whatever, or whatever candle you are looking for. So we have to admit that it doesn't tell us any story. It's only for numbers, and that's all. And everything else we are doing with those candles and say, oh, what, there's, there's a big candle with a big body, and uh, that's a great candle going north. No, if you have a candle like that one, what you know is that, um, that the open is same or is equals to the low, and that the high equals to the close. Do you know anything else? No. The, then you have to dig further into smaller time frames and f finally to the ticks. That is the one which really makes a market. It's not candles, and those candles are not telling you a, a story. On the other hand, those candles help us to visualize our price data, which is which is pretty good. I mean, uh, nobody f f uh, wants to look to time series in a in a um, in, in a letter format in in the number format. Um, to have those visualized helps us in order to see those trends, like prices going up constantly. But to to interpret those candles further doesn't help. And the other thing, why. I mentioned to be, um, yeah, I'm not that convinced, or uh, to be that convinced about anything about formations like like triangles and so on. If you look to those candle uh, formations, think about your childhood, and think about that somebody said, "Oh, look to the cloud at the sky; it looks like a line," and you say, "Wow, yes, you're right." It's really a line. You might even find a line in your candlestick charts. Our eye, our brain is extremely good in that association. That means we see what we want to see. But does it help us? Of course, there's no line at the sky, but it looks like a line. And the same is true for those formations within charts. We want to see them. Do the exercise, take a chart and do the following exercise. Go for any chart. Let me just make this one here bigger. Uh, let me change to D1 for whatever reason. Um, and then I move somewhere, somewhere in the past. And now what you might do is you you draw some lines which you think okay I have to to mark uh, that high um, and let's put it a little bit lower because then we we have those two together and there might be um, a support level uh, like here and then you do simply this experiment now you change you go a little bit further to into the future. And then you can see whether those lines have in the future any meaning. And do that experiment. In most cases, you will not find any meaning of the previous drawn lines. The tricky part is what we normally do is we go to the end of the chart like here. And now we do our chart analysis and say, okay, I see a high here, a low here, next, next high, low, and we draw some, some zigzag lines and say, okay, we are in an uptrend. Um, after that high, we have a low, then a, a higher high, and a lower low. Perfect, uptrend, everything works. And we, we draw our lines and everything. But nobody is looking to the same chart one month later and looking whether that kind of story has still any meaning. If you do that kind of analysis here, yeah, then we are investigating the complete history and we always know the next future because after that high, of course, I know that here's the next low. 
because I see it in the chart. But the problem starts when you go at the end of the chart. And we can do the same experiment somewhere in the past. And then you will quite um, easily realize that it's not telling you that much. But anyhow, out of the chart, we can derive informations. And that is the one we finally conclude in edges, like in other webinars, when we, when we look about trend following um, strategies, for example, or reversal strategies. Still, we use as an information or as an input our time series, our even candlestick charts, but then we derive a well-known edge or what we can derive out of what we are um, uh, analyzing. The story is a little bit different with some intrinsic time scales about candlestick charts. Let me first um, speak about the opposite example. And that there was a wonderful remark, I think it was a couple of uh, webinars ago, when we talk about candlestick formations and uh, somebody out of the audience made the comment, and that's really a nice one, um, that if you're looking for D1 charts in the Forex market and think about we are living in different time zones, then it means we all have different candlesticks because the, the start of the day is different. So a D1 Euro US dollar candlestick uh, in uh, Japan would be different to Europe, would be different to United States. Oh, wonderful. And now we think we can get any information out of that? No. By the way, if you go for a weekly chart, it would work once again because then we have a clear open, so the week starts. Um, but that's only a side remark. Topic is different when it comes to stocks or when it comes to, let's call it FDAX or Xetra DAX, just as an example. There are other indices, uh, even um, Swiss, um, the Swiss um, index or Austrian or whatever. They have intrinsic times. What do I mean here? For example, the FDAX opens at 8 German time. And even if you are sitting in London, it, there's no difference. Okay, on, 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 on your uh, watch, on your clock, it would be not 8, it would be, uh, let me think, it would be 7. But there's a clear definition of that open. And that open has a much more meaning than any open in the forex chart because there is no real open. It's the next candle. It's, there has no overnight gap and nothing. So we have for stocks and indices with some exceptions like, for example, uh, the S&P 500 or um, to be more precise, the ES, of the, the future on uh, the S&P 500, is more or less being traded 24 hours um, with uh, some, some minor interruptions there. Um, but anyhow, most of the indices, most of the stack, stocks, values, they have intrinsic times. And then those charts like a D1 candlestick pattern with a clear open has much more meaning. Because at the open, there is a specific, uh, a specific procedure how the price will be generated and so on. There's a lot of volume within the market. And the same is true for the close um, of those candles. Or, or in other words, the non-trading hours, let's call it simply the night, might or will generate new call for action. There's something changing, something new. I don't know what, but anyhow, it creates a new situation that's totally different to other D1 charts. So if you think about D1 charts and candlesticks, they are right and well for those which have an intrinsic time, an intrinsic time scale, like a, a defined open, defined close, and then those make much more sense. That's a little bit about charts and candlesticks. But now let's go for 
fundamental edges which professional traders use and which are really traits of those successful traders. We have some fundamental edges, some fundamental prob probability advantages. And my um, entrance state, uh, statement here is quite simple. If we look for our economic system, then that system is based on growth, nothing else. That's how <clears throat> we do business um, yeah, in, in our global economy. Grows, grows, grows. And that creates a fundamental bias for all indices and stocks. And if you look for a historical chart of the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, there's a, the chart is even uh, longer or has a longer history, um, more than 100 years, <laughs> I think um, uh, the multiplier is 100 in that range or even higher. Those stocks, those indices have to go north. If in average they don't go north, then we don't have a growth. Of course, there will always be times with some stocks uh, going faster north and some stocks even going close to zero because they, that company is doing something fundamentally wrong that will happen also in future. But we have that edge. And why not use that edge for indices and stocks? And we Next month, I will make a <clears throat> webinar directly um, for, for stocks. Um, and nothing else, because um, you know that at GFD you can now trade stocks not only as CFDs, as real stocks, which is quite impressive and very good um, to to uh, go for real stock trading uh, with a very good cost structure behind. But anyhow, if we look for that fundamental edge, we know indices and stocks are going north, at least in average. And why not use that? And do I have a strategy which uses exactly something like that? The answer is yes. Uh, let me show, and I will do a webinar for that as well in the near future. Um, but just that you see how that is running. Within that strategy, I only do long trades, nothing else. I only distinguish between two states. I go for long trades or I do not trade. I don't do any short trade. And how do I enter trades? Always as a correction. So I wait that something goes a little bit south and then I open a trade. That's more or less all about that strategy. And as an indicator, to, uh, uh, I use simply an EMA um, which tells me, um, do I um, can I expect further going up or not? Or should I stop trading? And I don't enter short trades within that strategy. And that account is running quite well. It's now a little bit more than a half year. And you might remember that we have had, um, uh, we'll call it a red February or end of January, where the stocks and indices went south strongly and more than, for the DAX, for example, more than 1,000 points. And you see, that's the equity of that account. It's uh, And it's not only the, uh, let's call go for the real equity, uh, so including floating losses. Uh, and even then you see, okay, uh, within, I have, had some floating losses uh, within that strategy, but in general, perfect going north. Um, it's a little bit more than one month, one percent of per month, and it's only trading indices. It's only trading. Um, um, and I have already. Um, oh, sorry, I go for the chart, and it's easier. Yeah, you see, I, I, I trade DAX, US, um, S&P 500, Dow Jones, Japan, um, the, the Nikkei, and so on. Just long trades. And if I don't see a long possibility, then I do not trade at all. So it's a good decision for that kind of strategy. So that is a fundamental edge. And just as a comparison, um, wealth management companies 
they to 95% are long only strategies. Why not going for something like that? Okay. And you can go on with that kind of story even for gold and oil, um, at least if there's not no no fundamental technical invention for, for replacing gold or oil, uh, then they, those are long candidates as well as well. So um and there's another edge you might use, and we discussed that uh, already in a previous webinar, that is within Forex market, we have the opportunity that um, we have always a couple of pairs which show up positive swap costs. That means you open a trade and you, you profit, you gain money every night, which is nice. So still the, 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 uh, the trade can run against you, but at least what you can use is you can use that as an additional edge that you have those positive swap costs. It's always about one third of all Forex pairs in one certain direction uh, Direction you can trade with uh, positive swap costs. Um, I have a strategy for that uh, as well. Let's go for that in, within one of those next webinars. I still want to uh, sh share with you one additional edge in, about Forex markets. Of course, we know that there is no general bias. I cannot say that euro, US dollar has a general bias to the north or to the south. No, I cannot do. Um, they only can once again mention the swap costs. But what we can do is we can classify our forex pairs in what I call strong movers and weak movers. Let me illustrate what I mean. And uh, some of you might already know the chart, but I have changed it a little bit um, to to a more longer time scale. What you have here within that uh, chart, and let me make it a little bit smaller, so this way. Um, what I plotted here is the average price change for a couple of uh, Forex pairs, including gold, for a long time. Uh, what a long time means for nearly one year and with average price change i mean i look for the history for more than 14 years and have done that averaging um it's absolute values so it's the move and i don't ask the question in which direction but it's the average move after some days so how to interpret uh, that kind of chart it means for example, for gold, which is the brown line here, after 100 days, you can expect the price being, in average, 8% away from where the price is today. Hey, that's already a number. Just 8% within 100 days. We don't know the direction, north or south, but at least what we know is that the average move of gold after 100 days is about 8%. That's one element. But the much more important element of the chart is look for the differences, for the different um, underlyings. You see, let's go for, for once again for gold. You see, it's about 8%. And on the other side here, Euro Swiss franc, totally boring. No move at all, just two and a half percent, nothing more. So now we can derive a very clear conclusion. If you look for a trend following strategy and you want to trade that kind of strategy, would you go for Euro, Swiss franc? No way. No, you would go for the other side here, for gold, for and the the, the order here is exactly um, opposite to 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 um, those numbers. So you would go for New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. All those yens are strong movers. So you can go for trend following strategies, breakout trades for those kind of um, forex pairs. And now the other, the other side here, those weak movers are interesting as well, because those ones are ideal for reversal trades, 
because you don't have to expect that they go for a long time in one direction. So if, for example, you as Jeff Benizian has made a spike to the north, that kind of analysis and that's for the last 14 years is telling you hmm, the probability is high that it goes south once again. So it goes back. <clears throat> so we can classify the Forex um, universum here in, in strong movers and weak movers. And we can automatically um, label those with a certain type of strategies. The strong movers with trend following strategies break out trades. And what we can say as well is they have a risk. You can open trades there with risk reward ratios much larger than one. And here's still some German. Let me correct that. Chance Risiko Verhältnis, that is a CR, we, uh, risk reward ratio here in English. On the other side, those weak movers, they are ideal for reversal trades, sidemap channel trades. If you realize such a, a, a channel, then you can expect that that channel would go on for the next time. And here you can go for trades it was even with uh, risk reward ratios smaller than one, which are quite profitable here for those um, kind of pairs. And the order sequence has been in the Excel sheet. And as always, if you are interested in that Excel sheet, um, just send me an email. Okay, so we have another fundamental edge here now with respect to the selection, the labeling or the classification of those forex pairs. As I told you, just a few lines about what I call a few wisdoms here. Just um, enjoy them or whatever you take out of that. But um, it's um, they're a little bit funny. Let's go through it. What I would recommend is ignore all those nice trading news. If you don't know the author and especially his competence in detail, just ignore them. You can go for Facebook or on any website and you find, oh, I have done a wonderful trade, doubled my account, great story, I do the next one, follow me. Hmm. Don't care about that. If you don't know the history of that guy, the competence of that guy, you can simply ignore it. The slogan behind, if, or if you are interested in those guys, is just quite easy. The slogan you should use is, show me your track record. You should, can ask that question to anybody and any professional would say, okay, no problem. Here's my track record. Uh, you can have it. No problem. Uh, give me a minute and I, 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 I show it to you. That should be your standard question to all those guys who are promising nice trades, nice um, yeah, profits. Or, and um, when I translate that kind of sentence, uh, I'm still not uh, sure, 100% sure whether you can, can really translate it that way in English. Uh, in, in the German language, uh, the sentence sounds a little bit even more nice, but it's extremely true, that sentence. What is too nice to be true is too nice to be true. Look really to that kind of um, uh, statement. And uh, same is true sometimes for me. When I develop trading strategies and from time to time I see, wow, what, a, what an equity curve, brilliant. What I later realizes that I have done some mistakes. Um, but it's extremely true. What is too nice to be true is too nice to be true. And you will realize that immediately. So look what people are promising you. Um, in most cases, if it's too nice, it's not, not that good. Or the other sense. There's a 90-90-90 rule of trading, or at least in, within the trading scene. And 
that 90 90 90 rule is telling you that 90 percent of all traders lose 90 percent of their account in 90 days or even shorter and of course no one wants to be part of that and i hope that all those informations i have within my webinars will help you uh, that you are not belonging to that category but that's that business and uh, therefore um, now, I do a little bit of warning here about um, what sometimes people are promising. Trading or to learn trading is a real job. And you might realize, and that is really a number out of practice, to reach even break even is possible on a time frame of about one to three years. And not everybody will be at break even after that time frame. So you, you, we, I have to learn always a lot. And the reason is even quite simple. That's my last sentence here. Our, let's call them enemies, are the real big players. Those from Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, um, you name them, uh, Morgan Stanley and so on. They earn money with that business and if they would not earn money they would not do that kind of job they would simply quit it they would close that business line those are our enemies and we have always to think about how can we be against them and how can we take have profits which we take out of their wallet it's a hard job because those are our counter players, so to say. Okay, just a few lines of wisdom here. Um, uh, absolutely not complete. What's a little bit around the scene of uh, trading. But finally, once again to the question, what are the traits of a successful trader? And just for four lines here, four statements, which I think which describes successful traders best. A successful trader is extremely disciplined. He's trading with fixed rules and has always a stop loss. He uses edges for trading and he has conservative expectations for profits or what comes out of his trading activities. Those four lines <clears throat> are really behind those guys who are trading successful and i hope that uh, you belong to those as well and you that you learn en enough and maybe even in those webinars um, to be part of uh, that group and not the 90 90 90 uh, guys as always if you are interested in slides and uh, those you can already download but uh, in the excel sheet <coughs> showing um, the average move for example no problem just send me an email see my email address here s.friedrichowski at jftbrokers.com and uh, i make sure that you get everything um, uh, immediately okay different topic for today next topic in two weeks will be directly once again a trading strategy about pair trading on smaller time frames uh, with uh, DAX and S&P 500 and already can mention that next month uh, at least one of those two webinars in June will be about uh, stock trading real stock trading not CFD based okay that's for today I hope you enjoy it and um, I wish you the best for the rest of the evening and uh, see you again hopefully in two weeks okay Bye-bye.